Hello, my name is Alan McLeod and I am an Applications Engineer here at MCAD Technologies. And today we'll be doing a webinar about what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2015, specifically what's new in eDrawings, the new Windows 8.1 3D printing interface, and SOLIDWORKS costing. Let's get started. eDrawings 2015 has been totally revamped and the interface and appearance now more closely resembles the version that has been available on mobile devices for iOS and Android systems. While the appearance is different, all of the same functionality is still available, and some of the most frequently used commands have now been placed on ribbon toolbars or directly in the graphics window. The buttons have been made larger and spaced farther apart to accommodate users who are working on a tablet or a PC with a touchscreen display. This makes it easier to select the individual features with the touch of a finger. Many of the tools no longer require you to interact with a dialog box, but rather upon selection, you can simply start working in the graphics area with the command that you have selected. Move component works the same way it has in previous releases. And once you have made your selection, you can use the triad to bring the part out to the selected area. You can also rotate the part if need be. The measure tool works the same way as it always has and allows you to quickly pull the dimensions that you are interested in. The section view also works in a familiar manner and allows you to quickly see a cross-sectional display of the part or assembly you're working on. Markups are now accessed from this bottom right-hand portion of the eDrawings window. Upon your selection, you will be able to choose between adding a label, a shape, a dimension, or an image. After choosing that selection, you'll choose from a submenu for the detailed type that you want to add. Once you make your selection, you add the markup in the same way that you have in previous releases of eDrawings. The component toolbar window has now been hidden in the bottom right. Upon clicking it, it will expand and give you access to all of the components that make up your assembly or features that make up your part. There are also four new display types available from this components menu. You can choose to show all of the components, to hide or show a specific component, make a specific component transparent or solid, or isolate a specific component. This reduces the need to right click in this interface. eDrawings has also adopted the Heads Up View toolbar that has been around, for so been around in SOLIDWORKS for many releases. You can now choose your display style and your views, as well as zoom to fit and rotate and pan. eDrawings 2015 now supports custom views for SOLIDWORKS native parts, so you no longer need to save as an eDrawings specific file to have access to these custom views. Custom properties are now available in eDrawings as well. From the file menu, you can select custom properties and see all of the properties that have been added. This makes it easier for your customer or your supplier to gain more information about the parts or assemblies that you are sharing with them using eDrawings. Now let's take a look and see how we can use eDrawings to view simulation results. eDrawings has always been a popular method for viewing simulation results. New in the 2015 release, you can now choose to show or hide each of your fixtures and loads. This allows you to provide more context 
that accompanies your result plot. Each of your plots will be available from within the study manager. You can toggle between them quickly to communicate what is going on within the part. eDrawings 2015 also supports results exported from SOLIDWORKS Plastics. This allows you to review and determine if a part will fail during the plastic injection molding process. For each simulation type, the legend and title information can be toggled off and on as well to provide a clean graphics area or information as needed. With SOLIDWORKS 2015 and the new Windows 8.1 3D printing driver, 3D printing has never been easier. Simply select 3D print from the menu bar and after a few quick selections specifying the printer, print quality, and fill percentage, you can be on your way to rapid prototypes faster than ever with the most popular 3D printers. Then, by selecting the desired printing base surface, you get instant feedback to determine if your build fits within the selected printer's maximum print volume. Click to accept and your job instantly sends to print. Costing in SOLIDWORKS 2015 now supports a wider range of manufacturing methods. The first new type that I'd like to look at is weldments. Here we have a table that is made up of a variety of structural members, a sheet metal top, and some general parts, such as the end caps and the gussets. We can see these parts are divided within the costing interface on the left-hand side. We have our folder for structural bodies, which will be our weldment members, our sheet metal bodies, which will be the top, and our general bodies, the end caps and the gussets. Lastly, we have a welding folder, which uses the cosmetic welds that were added and estimates the cost based on their length. The real power of the new weldment's costing interface is that you can estimate the cost of each weldment based on the total length or the cost per stock length so you can estimate how much scrap you'll be generating and what that will cost you. If your structural member needs any machining, such as end cutouts or holes, those will be accounted for within the costing interface. In SOLIDWORKS 2015, cast metal parts are now supported as well. After choosing casting as our method and applying a material, we can input values to estimate the molding cost of the process. Such categories include cycle time, mold cost, and waste material. By making a change, we can see how this will affect the price per unit of our entire run of parts. Updating the quantity will drive the cost down. When we look at our mold operations, we can see that we have one cast molding operation along with our two setup costs. This is useful for helping to determine the distributed costs of doing such a large production run. Our price per part comes out to be $14.66. Remember this number. Now, if we change our configuration to be the machine configuration, we'll be able to choose our casting as our stock solid body. It will take a moment for the costing to update. So now, rather than selecting the default block type, we can choose custom. And from here, we can base it on a configuration of our existing part and we'll choose casting. You could also select a reference part. By updating the stock body, we pull over that $14.66 cost as a baseline price. Now all of the machining operations are added on top of that to give us a more accurate estimate for a machined part from a cast stock body. If we look at our costing information, we can see we have our standard mill and hole operations, as we're used to for our machined costing parts. This new costing interface will prove to be much more accurate and help companies better decide how to approach the manufacturing process.
plastic parts are also supported in SOLIDWORKS Costing 2015. 3D printed parts can be costed using 3D printer data stored in templates. Here we have a multi-body part made up of three separate bodies. If we want to estimate the cost of slot center, we can do that. By double clicking on that individual body, we can open the interface for printing and estimating this single body. We already have 3D printing selected as our method. The next thing we need to do is apply a material, which is also already completed. Now we are ready to orient our part within the print volume for our selected 3D printer. With it on end, the price of the print will be increased because it will take longer and require more layers. By flipping it on its end, you can see how the cost was recalculated. We can also adjust the percent infill and see how that will affect the print time as well as the total cost. We can choose between different 3D printers by right clicking on the 3D printer under the additive operation. And you can also choose between the same printer running on different resolutions. This printer data is available in the 3D printing template. Here we can see the difference between our two printers is the feed rate and the layer height. These tables are fully editable and can be set up to the specifications of your 3D printer. We can also cost for a plastic injected part. This costing interface behaves similar to the casting interface that we saw earlier, and we can account for our runner system, our mold cost, and waste material. SOLIDWORKS Costing 2015 has been overhauled and it is very easy to get a handle on manufacturing costs and have a greater understanding of how each change will impact the bottom line.